Hi, my name's Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand, Forex Gold and S&P fundamental and technical analysis for the week ahead starting the 14th of October. I hope you all had a great trading week. So getting into the week ahead news. So in the United States, focus will be on the retail sales report and speeches from several Federal Reserve officials, uh, followed by industrial production, import and export prices, building permits and housing starts in Europe. All eyes will be on the European Central Bank's interest rate decision. <coughs> Excuse me. Followed by Germany's ZEW economic sentiment index and industrial production and trade balance data. Uh, in the UK, key reports would include the unemployment rate, inflation figures and retail sales. China will reveal its Q3 GDP growth rate along with data on retail sales, industrial production, unemployment rate, housing index and fixed asset investment and inflation data will also be released for Canada, New Zealand and Japan. So lots going on uh, this week, uh, potentially some definitely some market moving uh, news. So uh, starting off on the dollar index and the dollar index and the equally weighted dollar index is just uh, really a measure of dollar strength against you know the major basket of currencies that we uh, that we tend to trade uh, the major ones and also as well if you look at the top right hand side I'll leave a link um, for how to add the equally weighted index and why I use the equally weighted index rather than uh, uh, you know like the DXY or the USDX index. But um, looking at the dollar. Um, uh, over the past week or two, I have changed my bias in terms of uh, I've been short on the dollar since maybe uh, beginning of August, end of July. Uh, now I'm, I'm looking for either long or, sh or short trades. The reason being is because um, what's been kind of priced out of the market is 50 basis points. And um, the, the, the deeper the cut, the weaker the currency, right? Um so um, we did have some news on Thursday, on the 10th, which was um, the inflation data uh, on the 10th of October. Yes, yeah, so core inflation, as well as um, uh, we had some initial jobless claims as well, which was uh, not great. Right. And so uh, while trying to digest the data, um, pretty much the analysts were saying that the knee jerk takeaway is negative. Uh, bad jobs plus hot prices equals stagflation, says Vital Knowledge's uh, Adam uh, Cruiser fully. Uh, it is unlikely the Fed will have a dramatically different view after this print. So whenever you're looking to trade the news, um, one of the things I always say is, is that what impact um, does that data have on the central bank's thinking, right? So are the central bank likely to continue on the path that they're on in terms of either rate cuts or holds or hikes, or is it likely to change to, to and to what degree, right? Are they going to cut deeper because of the news? Are they going to, you know, cut less? Are they going to hold rates, right? And so the data really is showing that 25 basis points, um, a 25 basis point cut is still really the higher probability trade, right? So a month ago, we had, it was pretty much like a 27% chance that it could be 50 basis points. Um, and uh, really, there wasn't, a week ago, it wasn't really any chance of there being any kind of hold. But ultimately, the 25 basis point cut, which is where we're at now, is the highest uh, probability. And that's really what the market is thinking uh, the, the the Federal Reserve are likely to do so uh, even after all of the data that they've um, uh, that has been released uh, up until uh, so far so um, the dollar has really kind of priced out the 50 basis points I was saying this last week and as it starts to price out 50 basis points you can see um, the dollar start to uh, rally but I do think that we should now start to find some sort of ranging price action or what I considered to be an auction um, type price action where you might get some sort of sideways uh, price from here. Who knows whether it would go up to here or whether it would come down to here. Who knows, right? But I, I, I don't really necessarily expect um, prices to continue trending for much longer because the um, the news or the data really is, is, is pretty much now priced in. 
um, unless there's going to be some uh, shocking news that causes uh, the market to think that uh, the Federal Reserve are likely to hold rates and the probability of a rate hold starts to increase, which would mean that the 25 basis points would have to be priced out of the market. That's probably where you would likely see uh, a continuation of a strong trend on the dollar. But unless data does support that, I do expect some sort of, um, you know, prices to really kind of either start to um, be capped either from now or if it does go slightly higher, not much higher. So there are opportunities to really kind of sell the dollar um, and even buy the dollar on pullbacks if you are looking for a buy trade. Um, looking at now the uh, the dollar yen and the yen um, has been a bit weak lately uh, over the past few weeks, uh, mainly due to um, the uh, I guess the uncertainty around uh, the new prime minister, uh, as well as um, the more uncertainty around I think it's like a general election that's going on over there. Um, but ultimately, uh, there was some dovishness from the new government, um, as well as uh, Ueda, who was the um, who was the head of the uh, Bank of Japan. But I do think that now we sh hopefully should start to find a little bit of strength on the uh, on the dot on the sorry the uh, the yen and one uh, fifties is seen as a bit of a limit on the. Um, uh, in terms of upside so we could see maybe prices pop up a little bit to the 150s and then start to come down <clears throat> uh, but ultimately in terms of the dollar yen not really a pair I'm kind of looking at at the moment with some dollar strength uh, coming in um, uh, I do think that there are better trades out there in terms of a uh, policy divergence but if you are looking at this from a technical analysis perspective where we are right now is very very nice for a trade to the short side if you're looking for any kind of long trades then you're really looking for pullback into uh, this demand zone here before looking at again going going long right uh, looking at the um, dollar Swiss and dollar Swiss again um, I think for me actually I say again but I think for me I'm, if I'm looking to buy the dollar it would be against the Swiss francs so I'm looking for a bit more of a pullback before looking at going long uh, currently I do think that the Swiss franc is one of the weaker currencies uh, from a monetary policy perspective I think what's holding up the Swiss franc uh, could be some potential um, uh, risk off sentiment but uh overall the most the more expensive the swiss franc gets is the worse it is for uh the swiss national bank who are known to intervene to try to uh, manage their currency so um the swiss franc for me is a sell all day so looking for um on the dollar swiss more of a buy trade um for some upside potential if i'm looking to buy the uh the dollar which is on my watch list of um of currencies to look to trade Dollar CAD was on my list, but there was some decent news out of Canada on uh, Friday in terms of unemployment uh, data. So um, I don't I think the ca Canadian dollar weakness might be um, a little uh overdone now i do think there might be some canadian dollar strength um, we do have obviously some data coming out this week which may confirm that so we've got um that was the unemployment rate so unemployment rate came in at um 6.5 uh and then we've got inflation year on year so i think the market is waiting for that if it comes out as 2.1 i think the canadian dollar could be actually a really nice uh buy trade meaning uh, you're buying the CAD and selling the uh, the US dollar. Not this pair particularly that I'm interested in, uh, but the CAD against another currency, something like the Swiss franc. But in terms of this trade, um, really, there's no way to kind of get in um, in terms of a buy if you're looking to buy the US dollar. But from a sell trade perspective, um, unless you know how to trade, you know, uh, stop hunts in the way that we do, you could look you could potentially look at that area as a bit of a stop hunt or wait for prices to move up a little bit more into that supply zone and then look for a uh, a, a short trade. But um, even with that being a stop hunt, um, there are things around it which I'm not too um, I'm not I'm not uh, too keen on. But um, that will be reserved for the uh, for the uh, guys in the uh, mentoring group in terms of entries and how I would probably look to get. Uh, into this trade if I was looking to get into that trade um 
But again, I think there are better pairs out there to look to buy the CAD against. So, um, yeah, if you are looking for to trade this pair, those are really your options. Uh, the pound dollar, so the pound dollar is something that I'm more interested in, but um, I think it does depend upon what happens with the data this week. Um, data this week, they do have, I think it's um, <coughs> unemployment rate, yeah. Uh, and then we have inflation. Now, inflation is better to come down. Now, if inflation does come down um, a bit lower than expected, so let's go to the actual um, uh, United Kingdom channel. Um, it says here that inflation will fall back below the magic 2% level next week. This is according to economists who have been tracking the UK's basket of goods and services that make up the inflation calculation. Oil prices have swung sharply higher more, rec more recently, uh, but an earlier drop in fuel prices has likely pushed headline inflation to 1.8% in September, says Bruna uh, uh, Skarika, uh, chief UK economist at Morgan Stanley. So, if that does actually start to take shape um, and inflation comes down more than expected, I do think that the pound should continue actually to sell off if inflation remains stubborn. So it comes in at maybe 2%, 2.1% or higher than anything higher than forecast. And I think that the, the pound is likely to rally. Reason being is because um, rate cuts uh, or you know might, might be... Um, uh, priced a little bit priced out of the market. I do think the market is obviously pricing in some rate cuts in November, but ultimately the aggressiveness of that pricing in um, won't be as aggressive if inflation does come in a bit higher. So um, we could see some support depending on what happens with inflation uh, this week. So um, again, I'd say for me, uh, kind of waiting to see what happens around here. If the pound, um, if inflation does come in lower than uh, forecasted, then I think the pound in the short term would be more of a sell. Uh, looking at the pound yen and uh, pound yen actually might be a decent uh, sell trade if you're looking to sell the pound uh, and the data supports the the selling so uh, we are up into this supply zone so you could actually look for a short trade um, if you're looking for sell trades um, not necessarily looking to well looking to buy the yen but basically more sell the pound based on the uh, the data the inflation data so decent area to look for uh, some short trades if you're looking for buy trades and data obviously comes out supporting um, a dollar, uh, sorry, um, uh, pound buys, then you really have to kind of wait for more of a pullback into a demand zone before looking for a long trade. Uh, euro dollar. So the euro uh, is suffering a bit, both from uh, basically better than expected um, dollar news over the past couple of weeks, you know, non-farm payrolls came out was fantastic numbers. And also as well, the, um, the Euro data hasn't been great, right? So, um, it says here that the ECB is set to cut interest rates at every meeting. The European Central Bank has indicated that its monetary policy decisions will be data dependent. And remember the last meeting of each quarter is the most data driven, not least because it provides an update on the star forecast. Until now, we believe the ECB would only cut rates once every quarter in the second half of 2025. But now with inflation seemingly under control and the economy increasingly showing signs of weakening, we think the bank may well cut rates again in, at the October meeting. And then it should carry on cutting rates at every meeting until the deposit rate reaches 2%. So more cuts basically for the euro, more than what was previously priced in. So we have on one hand, the Federal Reserve and the market pricing out aggressive cuts for the Fed. And at the same time, we've got the um, European Central Bank and the market pricing in more cuts. Um, this is the reason why you've seen over the past few weeks uh, since the end of September, prices move to the downside, right? So um, there's no technical analysis that's going to stand in the way of uh, fundamental and resentment analysis. So um, the, the, the key is really getting the direction right, you know, your fundamentals right, and then you don't take unnecessary uh, buy trades um, at levels or sell trades at levels, if you understand 
where prices you know should go um in in the in the near future and so i did say last week the path of these resistance should still be to the downside which has happened so let's see what happens here um will prices you know bounce off of this level who knows but um of course we do have the european central bank coming out this week with further cuts i think a key to that is also as well uh the statement afterwards if the european uh, central bank come out as being dovish um then um of course we could see actually prices continue to move to the downside so <clears throat> who knows we could reach the 107s right 107s uh 107 or well, 108s and then 107 uh somewhere down at these um these lows around here so uh let's see uh what happens uh with the euro but the euro for me is is um is a, is a sell and i'm in a euro uh sell trade <clears throat> I'll get into that, in fact, um, a little bit later when I talk about the uh, the trade, uh, the new trades that I'm in and the, uh, the trade updates as well. So uh, euro dollar at the moment, you could look to be a buyer or seller, but I think in the short term, uh, I think any pullbacks into supply zones are likely to be selling opportunities. Uh, looking at the euro yen and I'm actually in the euro yen still uh, I say still but um, I've got in, um, uh, in into a new trade again I'll go over that um, a bit later on in the video uh, so I got in around here I do think that with rate cuts on uh, this week uh, if they do cut rates hopefully uh, prices should want to roll over right now who knows in the short term what price may do it might start to stop and take out liquidity before rolling over um <clears throat> but ultimately i think this uh, should really be a decent level to look for any kind of short trades if you're not in at the moment with um you know more rate cuts coming on the horizon for the uh, european uh, central bank in the euro if you're looking for buy trades then Really, the first level to look for a buy would be at this area, um, uh, you know, this demand zone uh, right here. But I do think that prices should want to roll over. Looking at the euro pound, euro pound, again, waiting really for a pullback. Uh, I think the pound is in a better position than the euro. This week is definitely going to be pivotal for both uh, currencies and both central banks with the data. So, But I do think that... Um, uh, any pullbacks up into maybe the 84 area, 84, 80s, uh, should be, I think, buying opportunities for the pound, meaning shorting opportunities on the euro pound. So let's see what happens um, here. I wouldn't necessarily be a buyer of the euro. Only way I'm going to be a buyer of the euro is if the European Central Bank surprise the market and they don't cut this week. But um Let's see. Let's see what happens. But that's where I where I'd be positioning uh, Aussie dollar. So Aussie dollar ended up um, uh, pulling back to a really nice demand zone. Um, and I do think that this could actually be a really nice uh, opportunity for a buy. Uh, the Australian dollar and the RBA are the really the last central bank to look to cut rates. So I think any pullbacks, if you've missed out on an entry around here, I think any pullbacks should be decent for a buy trade. Uh, one of the risks to this trade will be uh, what happens with China and um, uh, in terms of their stimulus and GDP, if the market is <coughs> if the market is happy with the uh, stimulus uh, number um, and they think that it's going to grow the economy, then I do think the Australian dollar should benefit right from that. So um, if you're not in already, um, I mean, you could still get in um, now, but ultimately I would really kind of wait for the data and the market to interpret the data and wait for some pullbacks before going, <coughs> sorry, excuse me, before going <coughs> long. But the path of these resistance, I think, is still more to the upside. The Australian dollar is uh, more of a buy. Moving on to gold. And gold was waiting for a bit more of a pullback before looking to get in long. I'm actually in long in silver. Um, so I didn't get in on gold. I got in on silver. There really wasn't a setup here. But now that we've created a bit of a demand zone in this area, you can now start to look for a bit more of a pullback into this zone here to look for now um, if you want to look for a buy trade on gold gold um 
I think for obviously the, the medium term, medium to long term, should uh, want to still continue to appreciate because the dollar, ultimately, the Federal Reserve are in the rate cutting cycle, right? So the, the with the Fed actively um, looking to cut rates, <coughs> then um, gold should benefit from that. Of course, gold would be more, more of a sell if, for example, the data doesn't support, you know, any kind of... Um, uh fed uh cutting right if if we start to see the federal reserve look to hold rates um then uh yeah i think you you should then want to look for maybe some definitely some sells on gold but as long as we're in that rate cutting cycle um then any pullbacks into a demand zone should really be by trades and looking at the S and P as well, uh, the S and P uh, continued to make new highs. I did mention this last week that um, the, the the key to really buying the S and P is understanding that uh, the soft landing narrative, right? So um, with jobs in the U S. Um, uh, being, uh, I guess, a more positive, I guess, um, you know, non farms having a having a great number, and the soft landing narrative. Um, you know, being more prevalent than a hard landing, you're you're still continuing to see a move to the upside. If you start to see more of a hard landing narrative, meaning that the economy is contracting a lot quicker, and we could and say the U.S. recession could you know be on the horizon <clears throat> a lot sooner, then you will probably likely see a bit more of a of a crash. Or if there's some sort of risk sentiment or, or risk event on the horizon, something that catches the market off off offside right now we do have the elections coming up as well so the elections are definitely um a risk event uh donald trump winning is seen as actually positive dollar so um make of that what you will um so uh i do think that though for me the any pullbacks into a demand zone are really just buying opportunities um for the uh for the uh, S&P, regardless where we get like a deeper pullback, because a pullback to down at these 5480s would be, what would that be? Uh, that's going to be something like uh, about a 5%. So it looks like a deep pullback, but a 5%, 7% pullback is really kind of nothing. 10% uh, would be even better. But yeah, look for buy trades, I think, at any of these levels. Um, as long as you've got decent upside potential um, in the trade, then um, my bias is to look for uh, some long trades for now. So that brings us to the end of the uh, the weekly analysis. Now let's get into some trade updates. So first trade update was the uh, Swiss yen. And also as well, I want to apologize for last week's uh, trade update. Um, realized uh, quite late after I'd published um, the, uh, the trade update uh, section, uh, I saw some comments on uh, on YouTube that were saying that the uh, the resolution was really small, and I have no idea why that was or why it occurred. And uh, apologies for that. So, uh, given a bit of an update from last week and as well as this week. So, um, fundamentally, I wanted to be a buyer of the uh, of the yen over the Swiss franc. I think they're in a better position. The Swiss national bank are still continuing to cut rates. The um, Japanese yen looking to um, to hold rates and even hike rates. Um, they might hold rates this year. There is still a bit of uncertainty around the yen in terms of uh, uh, politically, but overall, uh, the yen, I think, should want to strengthen over the uh, Swiss franc eventually. We've pulled back a bit now. The, um, the entries uh, last week, and we go down to the, uh, to the one hour time frame, and so um, my entries here were, um, was, right, so first entry, so I've broken the trade up into really four positions. So uh, first entry was here at the 171886s, and then the second entry as prices start to pull back was at the uh, 172 uh, two fours then the third one was uh at one seven two six four four and then the fourth one was up at these uh highs here which was one seven two so when prices pulled back it triggered me into three positions and once it triggered me into that that 
third position, what I'm looking for is really a one-to-one -one trade, which it did hit, right? So I'm looking to get myself to break even or um, a profitable position as soon as possible. So the plan was really to look for um, a winning trade or one-to-one -one on, on this position and then look for probably about a one-to-one -one on this position as well, this uh, sell pending order. Um, and then I can swing trade and hold uh, this position here, right? Um, but on this uh, on this occasion, I only won one trade. So that was the one trade that I won at a one-to-one -one and ended up losing two trades as prices pulled back now once i win on a one-to-one -one position uh what i do is i cancel the the final pending order right or any remaining pending orders that haven't been filled so i reduce my risk right reduce the risk overall so once i hit a one-to-one -one on that third pullback right hit a one-to-one -one, i'm cancelling that pending order which was up here so i've only got two remaining positions now prices did pull back um was was messing about a little bit i didn't get stopped out until here matter of fact i think it was um it was must have been the wednesday when i finally ended up being stopped out um on those two positions so um small loss on that one only one position loss uh, and then that was that. The pound CAD uh, was a winner. Uh, two positions managed to win on this. So again, the reason why I wanted to be a buyer um, on the uh, the pound CAD fundamentally was because um, at the time uh, when my entry was, which was uh, last week, uh, fr uh, it was last week Wednesday, matter of fact, I think it was around here Thursday. Yeah, it was uh, um, Thursday, Friday. Actually, it was Friday uh, evening, matter of fact, or sorry, Thursday evening, um, was because the pound at the time was seen as the stronger out of the two. The Bank of Canada were cutting more aggressively than the Bank of England. So any pullbacks should be buying opportunities in this demand zone. And so when prices uh, closed at the end of the day, going down again to the hourly, uh, looking for um, an entry and then placing some pending orders. So... Um, managed to enter at the 1.7778 and then placed um, uh, pending orders at the 17758 and the 17739 and then a one at the 17722. Uh, all buy orders with a stop loss um, at around the 17678 area. So... Um, uh, we did get a pullback, so prices didn't quite again reach a one to one on my market order. So it moved up, but in order for me to then you know take some profit and then cancel the other orders, price would have to reach a one to one. They didn't, so um, I left my remaining orders open. So as we pulled back, we ended up end up getting triggered into two positions, right? So uh, the one seven seven five seven area, right? So I end up in getting into two positions when the this position right ended up hitting a nice one to one right right there on this candlestick on this one here right so I took the profit off one to one got myself to a nice break even trade and then cancelled these two pending orders so if prices pulled back there's no need for me to then uh, really have that risk open right this trade is now at least i've already I've won one trade and i can swing trade now um uh, the, the original market order which was here yeah so if i had lost and prices pulled back from where we were now it doesn't matter because the worst that could happen is that it's a break-even trade so then we had uh prices you know continue moving up and up and up and up and up then on Friday, it was Friday, we had some decent news out for the Canadian dollar. So um, although prices didn't necessarily sell off, I decided to take full profits off um, because of the uh, the unemployment news for the CAD. So the second trade that I'm in was like a 1.67. I think I must have taken it off uh, maybe slightly higher. But yeah, it was around about 1.7 to 1, something like that, yeah, around around this area. So that ended up being uh, two winners on that trade.
The pound New Zealand again entered all the way back here, entered into three positions, managed to get into three positions. Um, so this was from way in, in September. So I was holding one position. I'd won two positions on here as we came back. So my original entry was uh, was here. That was my original entry. Then prices pulled back, triggered me into three positions right here. And then I ended up getting a one-to-one -one on both this position here, right? And then this position here. So I was already in a profitable position, right? Profitable situation cancelled the final pending order by pending order and then i was i've been swing trading this for since the uh, uh 30th of september and ended up taking profits right at these highs packet a pound new zealand um managed to pick the high matter of fact me and another uh a trader in the group uh big up to lawrence uh we ended up taking profits around uh these highs here I was trailing my stop as well, um, but when I started to see this uh, this parabolic move to the upside, uh, I can I said to myself this wasn't really going to be sustainable, and I was probably anticipating more of a pullback. Also, as well, uh, the pound was seen as quite expensive uh, with certain measures, so figured um, we hadn't had a decent pullback in in a while. We've had you know these kind of semi shallow pullbacks, but ultimately I thought let me just take profit up at the top right and uh that's basically what happened so a very very nice trade that trade ended up being i think about uh yeah about a four to one trade plus the other two trades as well uh so yeah very nice trade on the pound new zealand again the pound being the buy new zealand cutting rates right so we knew the new zealand dollar were looking to cut rates so um they cut rates by 50 basis points uh, last week as well. So ultimately, you know, we were just looking to hold this trade and take some profits off at these highs, right? So very nice trade on the pound New Zealand. Uh, pound Swiss, um, I got, this was a trailing stop out. So my I ended up trailing my stop up to around, I think the five, eight, uh, twos and then prices pulled back and stopped me out here so the original entry was um was around this area here and uh i think managed to get into a couple of positions as well um so this has been actually a really nice trade over the past couple of weeks so the final position uh when i was trading my stop up <coughs> ended up being about a two and a half to one so a very nice trade on the pound uh, I'm sorry, on the Aussie Swiss, again, the Swiss franc, fundamentally, the Swiss franc was a sell. They're looking to, you know, cut rates. The Australian dollar, the, the central bank are not looking to cut rates just yet, maybe at the end of the year, but they're holding for the longer. So really, this was a buy trade. And again, just zooming out, I don't think I've got it on here, but the uh, the setup was um, was based on, ah, it was based on the... Um, on the uh, higher time frame, because I have a weekly, um, it was a weekly uh, 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 demand zone. You can go back through the uh, the, the actual um, videos as well. If you go back to uh, the uh, the um, videos that I posted on the tenth, 9th, tenth, eleventh of uh, September, you'll be able to see the trade in uh, in a bit more detail. <coughs> And the New Zealand yen, so I'm still in this trade. I uh, haven't taken any profit off it on this trade at the moment. So my uh, original entry was, um, <clears throat> I got into this trade twice, but this week um, ended up um, uh, getting in around here on Monday. Yeah, Monday the seventh. So we haven't, I haven't quite seen a one to one before. I could take some sort of profit off if prices don't pull back and I reach a one-to-one -one and I'm only in one position, <clears throat> then what I'll do is I'll take at least 50% off uh, that uh, that trade so that I get myself to a break-even position. I'll then cancel the sell pending orders and then I'll just swing trade that one position, that half position down. But um, at the moment, I'm still in a bit of limbo. So I've still got these open positions in terms of uh, a sell trade here, sell trade here, sell trade there. Uh, pending orders open pardon me i've pulled back to now uh pretty much again break even right so let's see what happens uh here 
on these trades and again like i said if i get to if i get triggered into that trade then i'll look for a one-to-one -one on here before uh swing trading then the final position and then i'll just look to cancel these two pending orders and again i'll do the same depending on what happens right sometimes you get triggered into one sometimes two sometimes three positions and i'm in all four or depending on if i'm entering into four or three positions depends but um um yeah that's the way i basically manage uh the trades and uh, the positions so those are really kind of like the trade updates looking at new trades <clears throat> so the new trades this was a uh, uh, this uh, was a stop hunt that was actually spotted by um, a trader, Mark Bentley. Again, big up Mark uh, in the group. Uh, this was actually a stop hunt trade. So if I zoom out a bit, um, you'll see that uh, there's an actually a really nice uh, level here and here, and then there was a nice demand zone. Now a lot of traders will believe that because once uh, you know prices break below the level that the the, the you know it's it's gone right it's you know you should look for short trades and that's what's happened here traders have been caught going um you know breakout traders going short here um but we know that the uh, fundamentals would suggest that this is likely to be some sort of stop hunt the um want to be a buyer of the australian dollar over the cad so once prices start to close back inside this area um and it, the close, the, the entry was here, the first initial entry was here, that's where I ended up getting involved, and then I had a buy pending order at 0 0.9188, and another buy pending order at 0 0.917, another one at 0 0.9155. Now, prices did pull back, triggered me into this position, right? So, I'm in two positions now, right? And then I'm looking for, again, a one-to-one -one on that position, which was reached so one to one was reached right there on the uh on the Aussie CAD this week, right? So nice one to one trade, and then I was looking to swing trade this right now. I did enter the uh, exit the trade, took profit uh, earlier than expected, and it was really again based on um the Canadian dollar having better than expected news, right? So I thought that we. The upside would probably be limited in the short term to medium term so i ended up taking profit um somewhere around this uh, 0 0.9259 area uh, six area wasn't great risk reward but ultimately i just thought the trade the upside trade the upside to the trade might have been done now um it wasn't it carried on going now you know with, with hindsight everybody could say well you should have um you know you should have held on to the trade but in terms of the decision making, it doesn't didn't doesn't make any sense, right? Because if you have news going against your fundamental position, right? I'm thinking that the Canadian dollar is going to continue weakening, but then they have some good news that, in fact, you know the uh, the Bank of Canada may not cut as aggressively as what the market is pricing in. Then that makes sense to exit the trade, right? No point in staying in the trade because you know prices could have easily had just gone against me and then all of that would have been evaporated and I would have been kicking myself because I know better right there's bad news for the trade um and bad significant news not just any news I'm exiting on the trade right it's got to be um a sh uh, news that is uh, more of a shift in how the central bank might think about monetary policy and I thought that that would be the case so I just exited the trade prices went higher that's fine what I'll do is I'll just wait for a more of a pullback before re-entering on this trade so that was again overall profitable trade overall on the Aussie CAD so not in that anymore I am still in the Euro Aussie trade so again overall we got we got the daily and uh, this is again a trade that I think it was a uh, WJ I think uh, spotted on this or somebody spotted on this on in the group I think it was WJ or WJ asked me about it anyway so again this was a bit of a stop hunt trade um, above a supply zone um, which was a very nice trade. So we ended up getting involved or I ended up getting involved uh, in this. And again, the context for this is the Australian dollar holding rates and the European Central Bank looking to cut rates um, 
into you know uh, into next week and and possibly uh, the future, right? So any pullbacks on this should be really selling opportunities. Nice stop hunt above the level entered here, but didn't manage to get a second or third position or even a fourth position. Prices pulled back close to that uh, sell. Uh, pending order but didn't quite do that so uh, what I did was when, when I reached the one-to-one -one, which was around here on the uh, on the uh, Thursday uh, what I did was I took 50% off right so now I've taken 50% off this is a break-even trade um, I can't lose in fact it's a profitable trade now because now I've, I've, I've um, uh, trailed my stop really down to here so uh, taking 50% profits off uh, trail my stop down to here so now this becomes a profitable uh, trade can't lose from this position and with rate cuts coming on the horizon i'm assuming that we should continue to see some more downside right that makes all the sense in the world i'm not saying that prices are definitely going to go move to the downside now immediately you could get some stop hunting right but overall you know we should see more of this start to happen so uh let's see what happens there with the euro aussie but um, no matter what happens, that trade is yeah, going to be a small profit. Euro, yen, I'm in this trade as well now. See now, but entered into um, uh, entered into it right here. Um, not necessarily profitable just yet. My stop loss is above um, uh, at these highs at the... Um, I can't even see what price that is now, but um, it's around here. So above the market... And so again, I'm I'm expecting with rate cuts and continued rate cuts that prices will um, move to the downside. In fact, on this trade, um, this has been slightly. I've, I've won one position on here, but I'm in two open positions. So this was the position that actually ended up winning uh, at a one to one. So right there. So when prices uh, entered into you know the market order right there then a second pending order right here, then a third pending order as prices moved to the upside. So this, once I reached the one-to-one, -one, which was on the, it looked like the Thursday, I think it was, yeah, the Thursday, uh, right there, one-to-one -one trade taken, profit, and now I've got two open positions on the euro yen and so i've cancelled this top position so i've only got two positions open if i do lose this trade then it will be again only one position lost well uh, two positions lost one win so a small loss overall um but again with the um central bank cuts this week hopefully we can i can get myself to at least a one to one on this position here which would be the target would be somewhere around uh, to get to a one to one, I just need prices to go to uh, here, the one six one seven threes or seven five somewhere around there. Once it gets to that, then I then I'll be in a profitable position. I can swing trade this final position when the entry was around there, right? And then I can swing trade it and hold it for a lot longer, right? And try and. Uh, aim for these lows and see what happens so the potential for the trade is nice on that and then finally silver so silver um again prices pulled back on the daily to a nice demand zone around here <clears throat> right there nice demand zone and then um, when prices pull back into this area here, looking for some entries <coughs> and the entry uh, was right there at 30.85. Uh, and then I've got some pending orders, five pending orders if prices pull back, right? So if prices do something like this, then I'll enter at cheaper, cheaper, cheaper prices. Um, but they haven't so far, so I'm only in one position, and my one-to-one -one position is going to be up at these, at the 31, well, just below the 32 area, and if prices reach there, I'll just take off 50%, close the other positions, and then I'll, I'll hold that uh, that trade and try and trail up my stop. So um, that's where I am with, uh, with silver at the moment. So yeah, some decent trading over the past um, 
a few weeks, uh, some nice trades, and uh, yeah, there, there's a breakdown of pretty much um, how I, um, you know, uh, go into uh, risk management and uh, position management. So, all right, guys, take care. I hope you uh, enjoyed all that, and uh, speak to you all soon.